Welcome back, folks, to the Mel Wright Show. This is episode 144. Got my great co-host here, Robert. Would you like to introduce yourself quickly, Robert? Sure. My name is Robert Newman. I am the founder of Inbound Real Estate Marketing, which is uh, <clears throat> an online marketing company. Mostly it's a blog, though, Inbound REM. And if you want to learn something about uh, real estate marketing, you should come check it out. That's great. And I'm the founder of Mel Wright. We're a software platform that helps you get quality leads with emphasis on getting those leads from facebook and in this episode folks we're going to be talking we've had a bit of a change of heart we were going to talk about seo but uh for real estate agents but we're going to talk today about crms and um crms that are specifically suitable for real estate agents aren't we robert Yes, we are. And just as a suggestion, because uh, audience, we are, we are literally going on the fly. We made this decision about five minutes ago because we had a whole thing planned out and we had talked about it and set it up. So I'm going to suggest, John, that we actually kind of fought, that we talk about the CRMs that you put on your most recent blog post on the MailRight uh, website. Yeah, um, um, I think we're going to add um, to the discussion also line desk because um, I forgot to write about that. I might do okay. a total separate piece about that actually uh, okay. um, for the blog. But let's start with the top on my list. Um, but I thought our pre-discussion, your observation that you should really... Um, but I think what I was going to say is that we're going to discuss... There is no perfect CRM. It really just depends on the type of agent you are, doesn't it? Correct. But, but and yes, I think, and, and I haven't moved off wanting to talk about that at all. I, I just, we, I just, I was going to coordinate it into yeah, the CRMs yeah. that you had mentioned. That yes. was all I was referring to. Yeah, that sounds great. So let's stop. Let's start with the one of the biggies, top producer, sure. and. What do you think are some of its strengths and what do you think are some of its weaknesses, Robert? Um, okay, so I, I have, so Top Producer used to be one of the main CRMs inside the real estate industry and it has not been keeping up with the, the, the functionality that you need, such as texting. It's never had a really strong internal um, it's not built for inside real estate salespeople. And I define the, that kind of real estate salesperson as somebody who sits at their desk and calls a lot of leads, really works a database. And that's a, actually a fairly rare kind of real estate agent, but top producer is horrible for that kind of agent. So actually I have, I, while I've, I've looked at it and I know the tool well, I stay away from it. I don't end up recommending it a ton because in none of the areas that it develops uh, itself is it is it top uh, like top tier i wouldn't put it at the top of any particular category i would say if you if you really pushed me into a corner i would say that top producer is good because it it's been around for so long it integrates into a lot of other tools number mm -hmm. one and then number two it's reasonably priced that that would be like the <laughs> that's all that's what i would say about top producer so what can you because um we sprung this decision but i think it was the right decision for this episode got any idea about price what does it roughly um i thought it was uh I, and i'm reading off your yeah. your plan but i thought it was from 10 to 100 dollars is what my memory is saying yeah all the all yeah. the plans are like and they've got a few different tiers and they obviously, as with all CRMs, they always have like this recommended tier and it's always one of the pricier options, you know, so you, you know, you're not going to use the $10 a month plan in most cases. Obviously not. You know. <laughs> right. Um, but I would, I would love to steer our conversation, John, in the direction of talking about the types of realtors mm. um, it, and it, and then kind of connecting that into tools. Instead of talking about the tools, like the tools that you wrote about was uh, Top Producer, Follow Up Boss, HubSpot, Contactually, and Wise Agent. And um, what I would like to say is that before you choose a tool or call an expert, I think that we should be talking about how do you pursue your business? In other words, do you go out and do you knock on doors? Do you send out mailers? 
do you use Facebook marketing as, as you are, um, as your service guides people to do? Do you use uh, SEO leads or digital? I think that digital marketing, most of the time you actually would follow up with most of those leads the same kind of way and need the same kind of tools on the back end. So I'm going to say that, uh, but but you should figure out how you're going to generate your leads before you actually worry about uh, a CRM. What would you think? How would you? Th what do you think about that? That's what I would say. That's what I would say. Well, the, the, it's, it's a part of the discussion that's not of, not often discussed. So I agree with you. It's just it's just how you form that in in the conversation but i think we can start off with that by going on to another one and follow up boss because mm -hmm. i think it really fits into what you've just said so just give a quick your initial thoughts around follow up boss but i think it then really fits in quite well to what you were just saying well, in the spirit of transparency, Follow Up Boss has been one of my favorite tools to recommend, and it's one of the tools I end up talking to uh, like people about a lot. And it does, it does a number of different things very, very well. It allows you to be an independent agent or manage a team of people, and it, it one, as an individual, it allows you to set up marketing automation. It creates processes for you, um, and a process is... I send out an email and I send out text and these are what those, the email and the text says, and this is what happens the moment that a client's information is entered into follow up boss, which can actually be automated. So your digital marketing systems can send the information to follow up boss and then follow up boss does these automated things all automatically based upon the receipt of the lead and, and follow up boss does that very, very well. And what's more, it adds a very friendly dashboard where you can see the touches that have been that that have been done automatically, and then it also, if you train your team right, you can see the touches that your team has made to the lead that follow up on the process. And Follow Bus does that more intuitively and better than most other tools that I've ever looked at. And so, I, I love Follow Bus. That's that's all. I mean, I, what can I say? Well, I, I would use Follow Bus if I was in the real estate business. Um, I don't use follow up boss. Interestingly enough, I use another tool that's on your list, which is HubSpot and I'll explain why. But oh, because, really? right. because I am not the kind of salesperson that follow up boss no. appeals to. No, it's, yeah. Right. Um, you brought up an interesting thing already. Um, well, all of it's interesting. So I apologize for that. Um, but I think I think the other area about follow up boss is it's probably is not it is not designed for that single real estate agent. You can use it as a single yeah. agent, but it's really it it's and it's totally possible to use it if you're a single agent. Uh, um, the price might seem a bit stiff compared to some of the other systems that we're going to discuss but um if you're looking for the most powerful with the best ux uh, interface design folks um it's probably still worth it but it's more designed really for small and it's initial target audience i would say is this agent that's got four or five associates be underneath them would you agree with that i would i would agree that that follow up boss is a tool that's designed mostly for small teams or small brokerages um i would say that its efficiencies um and small can be defined by just a handful of people anytime you have more than one person and you need to track everybody as a unit i think that's when follow up boss comes into play i would say that it would probably work well for up to maybe 30 to 50 agents. And at that point, it might be a little harder to manage. But then again, at that point, if you've got that many agents working for you, you probably have a sales management resource in place that's managing the tools and the team. And that's probably what you need. The only thing I would say about follow up boss is yes, when it comes to functionality in UX design, I, I think it's brilliant. But I wouldn't say it 
and you could apply this to all these systems, but I would say because of the level of different things it's doing and the power that it provides, it's not the most simplest thing to set up initially. I totally agree. I think that, I think that follow up boss, if I had to, if I had to put a number to it, like one to 10, I'd say that follow up boss is maybe a six or a seven in terms of difficulty to set up because there's systems and processes. And if you are experienced in technology, I'd say it's, you know, you've got anywhere from five to 10 hours, but if you're not experienced in technology, if technology is new to you, I, I, I would say a tool like that might take you, like you might have to set aside a week or two to learn the system and, and try to figure out at what points are you setting up your processes and how does that look like? And then how does the tool work and how do you manage your team from within the tool? And here's the challenge, John, and I think you're, you're subtly pointing it out. For the tool to be effective, you absolutely have to sit there and study it before you implement it. Because yeah. if you're going to give it to your team, you have to be the person, their point, their go-to person. And you also have to set up requirements that say, hey, everybody's got to use this. End of discussion. Or else it's a waste of money, as are most CRMs. <laughs> That's, uh, yep. Well, I was, well, as you were saying that, I was thinking, I just don't want to put people off follow-up, boss, because the same things we're saying applies to most of these systems. But... Uh, but you've got to be aware, it's not the time that you're just going to, you know, they have onboarding procedures, they have, they, they have good documentation, they have training videos, they have all the things that you expect with a mature, well-designed system like this. But on the other hand, it's still not something that you're just going to sign up and by the end of the afternoon, you're going to be... Um, is going to be working for you unless you've got a lot of experience with follow-up boss. True you know, it just ain't going to happen like that, is it? No, no. And I, I want to move into another tool because I yeah. mentioned earlier in the conversation that I don't use follow-up boss. Not that I, I'm not a realtor, so there's, that's not yeah. a surprise. But here's the funny thing. Um, with my, my set of skills, I don't think I would ever use follow up boss. Even if I was a realtor, I would always stick with HubSpot. Right. And, and here's the reason that I would stick for HubSpot. Now in real estate, this is going to apply to very few of our listeners because it's going to apply to very few real estate agents or, or marketers of any kind. HubSpot is designed for like a digital marketing expert. If you know what you're doing, HubSpot is 10 times more powerful than any other tool, in my opinion, because you, it acts as it is a great like call center centric. I can, I can call from HubSpot, register my calls, record my calls, and make all my notes uh, using HubSpot by itself. In addition to that, it has a marketing plugin that takes all the information collected off my website and automatically sends it into HubSpot which means that um, all my marketing sequences are literally 100% automated with, without me ever having to touch them. And what does that mean? That means if, that, if somebody uses a contact form on my website, uh, they are automatically get a series of emails from me without me even having to do anything. They're entered into a marketing sequence with, without me having to do anything. My list is then curated, managed, and downloaded automatically into MailChimp, which is where I send out my, my newsletters from. And all of that is done. Now, if you think that Lion, like the, the challenge though, is that follow up boss, you were just mentioning, hey, there's a setup time. HubSpot, I'm still setting it up. And I've been using it for six months. It's extremely robust and dynamic, but it's definitely not for your average real estate person no. or even most of your real estate people. It's too dynamic. It will take a long time for somebody to learn how to use HubSpot and the set own, it up. Um, the, only, um, the only thing I could see um, 
in the real estate industry using HubSpot if they were a quite a big regional um, um, brokerage, let's say with over 100 agents and they've got a team, a digital team, and they weren't looking, they, you know, there are some um, kind of HubSpot solutions aimed for that size of regional broker lists um but let's say they didn't want to u- utilize one of those they wanted a more generic solution but something that had a track record that was powerful they could probably look at hubspot um but that's the only kind of user in the real estate e- industry that i think that could use that because it's not cheap either is it well the the plugins that i'm using i'm only spending 50 dollars a month on it but wow. but i am using only a limited number of their plugins it can get real pricey real yeah. fast because it can also it's 50 dollars a seat so if my yeah. team was on it it would real quickly get up to 100 200 300 400 a month so so is it it is not nearly as cost effective as many of the other systems. And as you point out in your article, it is not designed for real estate. It can, it could be adapted to real estate quite well, but it would take a real knowledgeable person operating the system to make that worthwhile. And it, when you measure it up versus these other, the only, cause we, we got into this conversation and I, I, I kind of want to grasp onto that thread. The only real estate professional that should really look at it is a hardcore inside real estate person, maybe with a website that they've got that one type of real estate person with that very specific set of tools that they're already using might benefit heavily. And, and a single person, by the way, a single agent, not a team, that one kind of individual of which I think there are very few that person might really benefit strongly from, from HubSpot. All the automation would make their job much easier. It's set up better than any of the other systems for phone calls. It, so, so that person, and it's set up better to manage your mailing list for you. Does all that very, very well. Yep. I think we go for our break, folks. When we come back, we're going to delve some more into some of these CRMs. Be back in a few moments, folks. We're coming back, folks. We've had a feast about CRMs. Another techie conversation. I love it. Uh, um, so, <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree what you what you were saying before the break about HubSpot. It's really, like I say, I see it as a, a regional brokerage with maybe 100 plus agents where they've got a post like digital manager, digital outreach manager, and somebody that either has got previous experience with HubSpot or thinks that um, it's still the right tool, somebody like that, um, I can see using it, but only that type of individual. Let's go on to another one, Line Desk. What what do you think of Line Desk in general? Um, it is again, we're touching on a tool that is. I have two tools I recommend in terms of CRMs. Um, and that is Lion Desk and, and Follow Up Boss. Now, Lion Desk is what I recommend to a single agent. So, if an agent is calling me and it's not a broker and they don't have a team, I'm recommending Lion Desk because it does it all. It sets up your marketing processes, it can text, it can re- record phone calls. I do believe that they've just added in the feature to be able to send uh, videos and emails very similar to Bomb Bomb. So, they can do all of these different things inside the same tool plus they have a pretty decent uh like contact dashboard so when you add all the things that they do and the fact that they're cheap in in comparison to some some of these other tools um and the fact that they've now got the video like if i haven't looked at that feature yet but if they manage to do a reasonably okay job they've literally just cut bomb bomb out of your marketing expense mix. And that is, that would be a huge advantage for Lion Desk. At that point, Lion Desk becomes the hand down recommendation for, for just about everything. Um, we spoke a few months ago, um, um, 
I forgot. To- I think it's Toby from um, um, Line Desk, and um, I think it's going to be a kind of not full ch- feature rich as Bomb Bomb, mm-hmm. but for, it's 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 going to be usable their video but it's going to be a bit cut back um which is totally fine because um bomb bomb is very powerful and they've added a lot of elements to it but if you're just using video occasionally it's probably um too much probably um it they were kind of sweeping statements really it's really it's back to how we we started this conversation and the point that you clearly made, Robert, it's really around case usage, isn't it? Right. And I um, think that, I'm sorry, go ahead. My bad. My yeah. Bad. The thing is what, what do you, with line desk, do you think there's some of, I was going to use the word problem, but that's not the right word, but I'm struggling to find, because I wouldn't say using follow up boss, um, is a problem but it's just the power and complexity and you're having to work out um oh i'm struggling now um you're you're also combining it in the way that you or your small your agency works the scripts that you're going to use the out there's a lot of factors you're you're trying to compress. Is the is those factors also there with line desk as well? Um, yeah, I would say that I would say that line desk is a little easier to use um, because you don't have to engage like in terms of setup time. Because every time you start saying that you've got a team, there are team dynamics that come yeah. into play, such as I have to insist that my team uses the tool for the tool to be valuable. I have to I have to manage my team within the tool and I have to set the tool up. With LionDesk, you just have to set the tool up. Is there still a level of complexity? Absolutely, no doubt about it. Is it quite as complex as as follow-up boss? Because of the nature of the tool, I would say, I'm inclined to say no, but but I'm hesitating because LionDesk has more they, they, they're trying to be the jack of all trades inside the CRM business for, for real estate, which means that you have this very long set of things that, that LionDesk does. And what that forces you to do when you're, when you're l- like looking at the tool for the first time is you have to try to figure out what, which of these features you need. So unless you're a CRM expert who has a real good understanding of what your own digital marketing plan is, you have to go through and figure out which elements of this tool you want to use. And yes, there's a, there's a learning curve to doing that. Um, and I think almost everybody's going to have it. And I think the funny thing is, is they're going to discover, as you already mentioned a few minutes ago, they really don't need to use all the, the it's, it's like a Swiss army knife. You know, yeah, you got- I was a bit, a bit hesitant. <laughs> a bit, uh, initially I was a bit hesitated in recommending line desk, um, because it actually competes with some of the things that Mailwright does. But even though I, I I might change my attitude about this, but I didn't want Mailwright to become a CRM. Um, if it did ever decide to do that, it would be a very basic one. Sure. Um, because there's, there's systems like follow-up, boss, and other systems that I think do it very, very well. Sure. Uh, um, about eight, nine months ago, Follow Up Boss decided to really aim their pricing and their focus on small teams. They uh, they did have a single um, product that was aimed at the um, single agent that maybe had a couple of buyer associates. Um, but um, I was a bit hesitant with line desk, but I, I see where they're coming from. But it's such a good price that you could still just. What about the actual core of a CRM? Uh, you know, the core of the CRM is note taking, managing who, you, uh, you know, who you're going to call that day, or t- um, tech having a system that can text out um, when somebody fills in a form or something. Those kind of core functionalities. Do you think it's, it does those really well? 
I think it does, though. I have to. I have to be honest. Um, the kind, the level of detail that I like to get into, which is, I like to use these tools. Yeah. And 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 be able to come from a place of I'm a user, and this is my experience. And I have not used um, either Lion Desk nor Follow Boss. I have reviewed them. I have looked. Yeah, I'm, at, in, I'm in the same, exactly the same as you, Robert. Uh, yeah, so it's like I've seen them, I've seen how they worked, and I'm a guy that uses CRM every day myself and has been for the last 30 years. So I have I have strong opinions about that because I've I've been using these tools for so long, and I still use HubSpot. HubSpot is a core piece of my business, um, but I I I can't really like I think that's the other part that. And I would like to say this and, and get it out to our audience. One of the things that I've noticed um, in inside of real estate is there's all this conversation about CRMs, managing your data. It's the big topic right now, which is funny because it's about four years. Like they should have been talking about this six years ago, but real estate is always 10 years behind in technology. So now everybody's talking about it now. You have to think about how much time you're going to be spending inside your CRM. And the answer is for most real estate salespeople, the answer is going to be less than 5% of their day if they, if they calculate it. So with all of that being said, most of the time, most of these tools, such as Bold Leads and probably MailRite and Real Geeks, they all offer a rudimentary CRM, a place that your, your information comes and gets housed in. The only time that I recommend that you move that from one place to another, to another set of tools, is if you understand really clearly that a specific set of your process will not be served by the tool that's being provided for you, such as automatic texting or an, or an email marketing process that is automatic, that has nothing to do with you, and it kicks in the moment the lead is delivered. In that very rare circumstance, I'm going to then say that's the functionality that's unique about LionDesk or these other tools, and that's, that's why you should use them. If all you're going to do is I'm going to log in, and look at information and be able to call it, the basic tool that most of these services offer is going to be great for you. It's going to be fine. You don't if need you're to. So, uh, uh, you know, um, you, I, I totally agree with you. Um, I know it's a bit boring, folks, you know, you know, like me, and, uh, but uh, um, it is what it is. Um, I, I compare it to, like, golf, really. You know, you're... you're you know, you're a reasonably good local golf player and you think buying these are power tools so you think buying a profession uh, a set of golf clubs that's aimed at the professional the, or the quasar professional is going to improve your game well it's not actually getting more coaching <laughs> and improving your swings right. the fundamentals is probably going to improve your um, golf much more than buying um, a, a quasar pro set of golf clubs. Um, on to uh, on to the next one, um, and then um, Wise Agent. I've looked at Wise Agent, and then it was uh, it was over about nine months ago when I looked at Wise, Wise Agent, and like I say, it was a review. Um, so I have to point that out to people. Um, reasonably priced i found the interface to be very very dated and I, I found some of the functionality interesting but the actual interface i found really dated and i felt i found some of the things they were doing pretty clunky in okay. but the price compared to some of these systems um what I'm going to say, quickly finish off with Wise Agent, is can be applied to Line Desk. They they were doing a lot of stuff in Wise Agent, and it's always a balance between um, should you offer that option or should you just offer it integration with the leader that offers that option. And it's a bit like our discussion when we mentioned Line Desk and Bomb Bomb. And there's no easy answer to that. Should you integrate video uh, into your system as what Line Desk has decided, or should we just offer uh, a method of ease of being able to use BombBomb system with us? That, you know, it's the ongoing debate, isn't it? Because it's another service that you have to pay money for. 
Right. And if you're the casual user, um, you're not going to want to do that. So having that ability in your CRM is good. But on the other hand, if you're just a casual user, is it really that important to you? So it's an ongoing there is no answer to that really is there robert not really and again it comes down to the kind of agent that you are how you're getting your leads you know and another thing about crms and about making decisions about about crms is that you should understand what your lead flow looks like 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 a good percentage of the debate about crms relates to a lot of these digital lead producers that do produce a lot of leads because Facebook marketing done right produces a lot of names that you need to go through. And wise agent brings up one of those things here um, that I haven't used this feature, but they have one thing that they list here that I haven't seen anybody else do list, which is they're saying that they go out search for social information um, from the lead information that you give them. Now, if they do that, that's a Spokio-like feature. So Spokio is the best um, like lead fulfiller that's out there. So what you do is you take a little information, you put it in Spokio, and now you learn a ton more about your prospective client. And if you're doing a digital lead service where you're getting like 100 names, like um, bold leads will do that, but they're very low quality with very low return rates. So if you can get a whole bunch of other information on that prospective client, like their LinkedIn profile and other things like that, you have a much better chance of getting a higher contract rate from that person if you have a tool that's pulling all that data for you automatically. It's not something that you see a lot and it's only useful to you if you're, if you're generating a high volume of low quality leads, which is gonna happen if you're using Facebook marketing um, to get, gather your leads. So why again it comes down to what kind of agent are you how are you pulling in your leads because all these people doing referrals they don't need any of this crap so they're going to go like like there's um uh these got these guys that are famous like borsini or something like that anyway there's these these very famous real estate trainers that train people to do only referrals yeah and they do need a crm but they don't need all these other tools on the crm because they're not getting their leads in such a way that they need automatic drip or anything else. So, so they don't need all these tools. Um, wise agent, the only thing that I, cause I don't know wise agent. Let's just say, say that I have not sat through a demo. I've not really looked at the tool. What I just did right now is I pulled up a list of the features and looked at it and I'm, I'm playing off your commentary about it, but I'm going to say the only thing that really stood out for me is this pulling information from other places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think we do, folks. We're going to wrap it up. We're going to have a little bit of bonus content. We're going to continue, we're going to continue the discussion, which you'll be able to see on the Mel Wright website with a full transcription and links to everything we've discussed so far in this podcast. So if this conversation has been interesting, you want to find some more, go to the Mel Wright website and, it, and um, there'll be um, – a continuance of the discussion and all the links that you require so you can find out more yourself robert how can people find out more about you and what you're up to robert please visit my website inboundrem.com that's and make his day leave a huh? comment and say i've come to your website robert because i heard your mail right that please would, that would yes. make his day would it, it would make yes, it day. yes it would yes it would i would love that that would be that would be brilliant That'd be great. And if you want to find out more about me, go to the Mel Wright website um, or go to my Twitter feed. Uh, that's at Jonathan Denwood. Um, they're the best places or the Facebook page. We'll see you next week where we're going to be talking, getting you better leads for your real estate business through tech. It, we're, we're just tech divas, folks. We'll see you next week, folks. Bye. <laughs> right um it's funny that you you, you mentioned this because oh i'm just terrible i had a previous guest over a year and a, over a year ago and okay. there's a there's a plugin that works with google gmail okay and it does something very very similar um i will have a link in the show notes 
I spoke to their their sales manager came up. I know a couple of agents that are using it. They have a paid level, but the free level it totally functions. There's other services that does a similar thing, what you just described, that works with Gmail as well, isn't there? Yeah, there is, and there's there is a contact plugin that um, that that we've got. Um, that we got uh, that works, uh, but you know I can't remember the name. I, think I want to say it's Contact Twenty Four, but I might be wrong. Uh, but but yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And, now, and I I've seen something like that inside inside Gmail. Yeah, and the last one, which we run out of time for the po- in the podcast part, of the shows contactually. Uh, um, they have um. There, there's a list of very there's a list of CRMs aimed for general business, but um, also um, most of them are generalistic, which you can adapt at free or or lower price levels. Contactory is a general one, but they also offer a module that ma- that makes their actual CRM focus at the real estate industry as well. They also in they also have this social element as we were just discussing as well okay. as part of it. Um, quite a modern design. I like. Got to point out what Robert. That's what I love about Robert. He always he tells it as he sees it. You know, <laughs> we are, I haven't used it. I've only um, you, like used their fourteen day whatever seven day and then gone in and looked at it. But I've used a lot of these systems um in my did you did you like it for the 14 days that's my question or well, the couple of days i was looking at it uh, <laughs> um, i thought it was a really modern modern design um the price is around 70 dollars so it's not uh it's a little bit pricey for that single agent that's maybe in the you uh, know it's kept in the industry for the first year is getting some leads you know sees sees a future in the industry or somebody that's been in it for like two three years um i would have to delve in it a bit more before i could give it a strong recommendation and then i say that they've got you got these like zo zoho they they got a crm and pipeline they've got a crm they're a couple of the general ones pipeline right. Um, it's very priced, very competitive. I think it starts at nine dollars. I do think they also got a module that adapts the interface, so it's more focused at the CR, at the real estate industry. But there's a whole host of these CRM systems, which were, were basically started off with what Salesforce did, really, didn't they? I think the SaaS um, sales organization. Um, system was started off with Salesforce, wasn't it? Yes, absolutely. And all these kind of are, I wouldn't say copycats, but you know. No, oh, this was a copy. They, they, they are all copycatting. Uh, Mark, uh, whatever his name is, they got the founder. He came up with a brilliant idea. I was there from the beginning, and, and Salesforce was a disaster when he first when he first uh, made it. It was grew too fast and was buggy and glitchy and. But they fixed all those problems with lots of round of financing. They managed to, to shore up the infrastructure. And now Salesforce is a behemoth inside the technology industry. Well, I wouldn't say it was my most favorite. I, you know, I have had to in, do some integrations with my other um, life as a web, um, as a head of agency, pardon me, around WordPress. Um the strength of Salesforce is all the is the library of integration systems and third party plugins and systems that works with Salesforce. Right. And that you know, that's enabled uh, one of the key factors that enables Salesforce and it is an enterprise product and compared to some of the other enterprise level CRMs or um systems similar from Oracle or Microsoft or someone, it they make Salesforce look easy to use. <laughs> so it depends what you. But the these are these are systems that are are enterprise level or medium like 
200, 500, 1,000 to 10,000 employee level, aren't they? Yeah. Well, I think that's what – it's funny because notice how we've been talking about CRMs for a while and we haven't even mentioned Salesforce. It's really not an option for no. – for most small business, it's not an option for my business. It's, it's ridiculously priced, number one. And number two, you have to buy it for a year in advance. And, and it's really, it's funny because all the agencies that I worked at were using Salesforce and I never did understand it. I always felt it was, it was not a great tool for these agencies that I was working at with these digital, but everybody, every single one I ever worked at used it. I was just like, I, I was super confused. And now here I am doing reviews and CRMs and I don't even talk about it. Well, I'm even surprised that you, because obviously HubSpot in a way is a nephesis in the WordPress community, because obviously as part of their packages, they give you a website and they give you, um, I didn't know with HubSpot that you could buy into it at the level that you've been able to buy into it. I thought it started off at about $250. I didn't even realize that you could start off at, at the level. So start off for but I haven't looked at HubSpot apart from this review I did. I, I didn't look into it. You know, I've, I know a few people that use it and especially this certification system where um, you hire a consultant that's gone through a certification with HubSpot, um, you know, but the UX, I got a bit, is pretty polished. You know, um, they, I've utilized some other tools that they produce, and they've always been pretty effective. Yeah, and and I, yeah, and they've got, and they they um, uh, they've really gotten this to to the point where they've got some great hooks into into HubSpot. They're very clever about the way they price. They used not to be, they they used to have, their system was so expensive and they've really tamped it down. They've got it. They've got it to a point where it's very reasonable. I I forget what I spend the $50 a month on, but it's not for their basic functionality. It's for like, I think I spend it on marketing sequences or something like that. I can't, I can't remember what I spend the $50 on, but it's a, it's a plugin that I, that I think obviously is, uh, is critical. Um, HubSpot also does all these genius things where they are they are integrated into WordPress quite nicely, and they collect uh, the the form. The thing that I use the most is where they collect emails off your forms automatically, and it's funny because that's free. They don't charge me for that, which is crazy to me. Oh, that's great. I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up now, folks. We've had a, a technical gorge. We've got a guest for next week. And um, we'll be talking around SEO, evergreen content, and web design, and why having a really quality website for your real estate business is still really important. We'll see you next week, folks. Bye.